I can't get enough. Got a space in my tackle box, just got to fill it up. More love, I can't ever stop. Don't got a basement, got an underground tackle shop. And here are the hosts of the Lore Love Podcast. John, Crappy Hippie King, and Tim, Tackle Box Beat. John and I, along with Lucy, the Lurematic Computer, are so excited for this first episode of the Lure Love Podcast, where our motto is, why buy one lure when you can buy 103? So John, both of us have test fishing ponds where we test out lures. Tell me a little bit about the pond on your property where you test lures. Uh, it's a, oh, it's just, just a little under, just a little over, right around two acres. It's shared by myself, my sister, and our neighbor, um, but I own most of it, and uh, it's just your typical Kansas pond with the bass, bluegill, catfish, and, but we also have crappie and red ear in that pond, so it gives me a good opportunity to uh, go down and, and uh, test things out when I think them up or just keep my fishing skills sharp. And I encourage people to, you know, come and fish. Uh, I like that it gets some pressure because uh, that is a good judge of a bait if it can overcome the fishing pressure and get fish to strike. So, yeah, typical Kansas pond. We love it. How deep is it? You know, it is good and deep. I mean, it's the very middle. It's probably six and a half feet, you know, which doesn't sound like a lot. But in Kansas, if you find a pond that's over you know six eight feet that's that's a deeper pond real deep ponds are around you know 10 to 15 and quarry ponds and all that don't get me going on ponds tim because I've, i have two <laughs> of my favorite ponds are only three and a half four feet deep all the way across you can wait all the way across them and they're killer let's hear about your pond so the, the pond that i have at my house i'm actually live in the suburbs so it's a suburban detention pond it's only about three quarters of an acre but the water is pretty clear for a, a pond uh, like that because you know you get a lot of the runoff and things coming into it similar to yours bass bluegill catfish and some huge grass carp that i've had the pleasure of catching on a fly rod and they are just amazing fish to uh, to catch probably maybe nine feet deep at the deepest but similar to your pond probably averages five or six feet um heavily pressured, but that most of that pressure is from me. I fish it almost every day. I do at least one lap. And especially when we get new lures to review, the great thing is I open the mail and I'm out at the pond in five minutes and testing those bad boys out. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. I mean, yeah, that's the beauty of it, right? Like I, um, you get something and man, you go right on down. I, you know, we're just a couple little kids when it comes to lures, aren't we, Tim? <laughs> we are, we are. Oh, that was a good cast. Nice cast. She's in there all right. Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Look at the size of that weight. Dang, son. Where'd you find that lure? Hey, you know what, Tim? Berkeley sent me some fishing lures. They sent you some fishing lures? They sure did. And there's nothing that we like better than getting free lures in the mail to review. They sent us the hit sticks. Love that name. Hit stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a beautiful bait, beautifully constructed on that uh, Rapala minnow, you know, design that's been known and loved and, and emulated and copied. Uh, but I think this goes beyond pure reinvention. I think this is uh, as unique a take on the, on the uh, slim minnow as you can find. There's really a lot of research and design that went into this lure. Sometimes you see a new lure comes out and it just seems like it's a, a slight variation of things you've seen before. But the the uh, scientists at Berkeley really put a lot of thought into this. And I really wish we had had the chance to talk to some of the Berkeley lure scientists to learn more about the hit stick. Well, Tim, you could call Berkeley and talk to one of their scientists, or I could just hack into their mainframe and get the answers for you. Don't do that, Lucy. Too late. I'm inside the Berkeley mainframe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Accessing top secret hit stick design documents. Analyzing, analyzing, analysis complete. At least you didn't leave any tracks that you've been in their mainframe. The hit stick is a jerk bait style lure that comes in seven bait lengths from two inches to five and one ninth inches and 20 color combinations. 
Swim depth is from 2 to 9 feet. The hit stick delivers ultimate versatility and can be used as a finesse jerk bait, trolling bait, or casting bait for all predator fish. Berkeley scientists identified four key design factors that they incorporated in the hit stick. The factors are Number 1. Yaw. Yaw is rotation around the vertical axis of the bait. Number 2. Tail swing. Tail swing causes vibration, which attracts fish. Number 3. Roll. When the bait rolls side to side, it flashes, attracting fish. Number 4. Pitch. The pitch of the bait in the water should be flat, mimicking the way a bait naturally swims in the water. Together, these four pillars attract fish from a distance and also pass up close inspection just before the fish strikes. Very interesting. Balsa has always been a great material for jerk baits because of its lifelike action. I've always liked fishing with balsa, but it does have a few drawbacks. You know, the original Rapala was primarily used as a trolling lure because in the 30s, when it was invented, the rods and reels and lines weren't capable of casting such a light lure. That's right, Tim. As a material, balsa can be inconsistent, not very durable, and can't be cast very far. Especially if you're trying to cast into the wind. The hit stick was designed to remove all of those negative factors, while keeping the positive ones. Using their patented flash disc technology, flat weights on the bottom of the bait, Berkeley was able to keep the buoyancy and action of balsa with a tougher exterior, and the ability to cast much further than balsa. The flash discs add mass without sacrificing buoyancy, and give plenty of room for rattles. I love rattles. The synthetic material used for the hit stick is much more consistent than balsa. Every hit stick swims exactly the same. Hit sticks are 364% tougher than balsa, and cast 60% further than balsa. There are four patents pending on the hit stick design. Exiting the Berkeley mainframe computer. Well, I guess that was a little bit easier than calling the Berkeley scientists. Oh, by the way, I also downloaded the stats from the Berkeley fish strike tests. I'm printing it out for you now, Tim. Okay, so the hit stick advertising says that it's scientifically proven to bring more fish into the boat. Now, you've gone over this data, Tim. Explain it to me. Explain it to the listeners. What is this Berkeley data saying to us? Well, the first thing is I love the fact that at Berkeley and other lure companies that they actually are doing this science and, and testing. And at, at Berkeley, they conduct their research in their lab's fish behavior pool so they, they can watch how fish react to different lures and, and to estimate catch rates and how often the, uh, the fish are hitting the lure. It really makes sense because while you want to test lures in the field, you want to watch how fish you know, approach them and, um, and the reaction that you get out of them. So they have their pros doing head-to-head -head field testing too, but the lab is really key. And they use their research to determine the specific actions and hard baits that increase the catch rate. So what is it about a, the, the wobble, the action that gets more fish to strike? And they've taken those features and then designed them into the hit stick. The research data shows is that in their fish behavior pool, Berkeley ran these hard baits by live bass and they watched and they quantified how they reacted to different baits. And they compared the hit stick to a similar competitive floating minnow style bait. Um, and they measured both the hits when the fish actually takes the bait as well as bumps. So, a, you know, you've been fishing and a fish comes up and just kind of noses the bait, but is showing significant interest in it. And they tested three different sizes of the hit stick. And overall, and I thought this was pretty impressive, the hit stick got 33% more hits and bumps than, uh, than the competitor, but the results did vary by the size of the bait. And I thought that this was interesting for the smallest bait, which was two and three quarter uh, inches and a quarter ounce, the hit stick up 45% more hits and bumps. Now that is a significant difference. The three and a half inch bait, which is also a quarter ounce, got 34% more hits and bumps. And the largest bait they tested, the four and a half inch got 20% more. Now, I don't think that really means that you get fewer strikes on the larger bait. As you and I both know, John, on any given day, fish are just going to hit different things. And I, I think that that's more coincidence. But what we're seeing here is that overall, their tests showed that they were getting significantly more hits and bumps using the hit stick than a similar type bait. 
No, you never know what they're going to hit, although I, that little number seven is my favorite, and uh, I was glad to see it came out on top. But, yeah, of course, they're different size forage. I mean, I don't know how fish in a, in a fish pool, an artificial environment like that, are going to be in terms of uh, when they've been fed and this and that. And maybe, you know, longer uh, baits or, you know, a four-and-a-half-inch bait is harder to compete against or harder to make different or – Oh gosh, we could we could do the metaphysical meanderings on this all day, but yeah, it's it it doesn't mean it's it's you know it, it's still got twenty percent more. So, out of ten casts, it's giving you two more two more bumps than you had before. So you know, still doing pretty good. And what was your experience using the the hit stick, John? Oh, I like we say, I ran right down test pond, used them, caught one bass right off, and then uh, and and we're not talking you know you know big bass we're talking pound bass here and and hammer handles and stuff but uh it was on a really cold cold windy day and that lure cut that wind and you know i was able to cast without backlashing which you know backlashing for me is an issue on a regular perfect day so it was great to have a bait that really cut that wind and because i've got all this brush in my pond uh the advantage of a floating floating jerk bait uh, with a real slow, slow rise like this is that instead of staying weight neutral and then continuing to move down the water column, you know, every time I'd work it, when I'd come to the brush, you have to be patient because it is a real slow floater. It's really good as a jerk bait, but it will float up high enough then that you can, you can walk it over the top of the uh, brush. And then once you're, you know, the other side, you can, you can hit it hard and, and pull it down and get it back. Uh, to a greater depth really well built to stay in that strike zone wow what a hard vibration what a hard wobble i mean you this thing you've got to know it's sending off a lot of sound and then uh, i got a chance to go out another day to a private lake this is a really weedy brushy brushy messy uh lake uh and it was a sunny day a beautiful day and uh they have these little flash weights in the belly of that thing. You know those things? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the flash discs. Yeah, yeah, flash discs. Yes. And, you know, that, that bait really rolls. And those in the sun, when they've got some light to catch, uh, they, they, give you, they give you a good flashy look. So you've got a visual component, killer paint job with epoxy that I think you could take a bullet to and not penetrate. Uh, really good construction on the thing and uh, beautiful paint. And then, of course, it flashes, too. Yeah, so I, I took it right out to the test pond and also fished it on a, a local uh, river for smallmouth. And I had a lot of the same experiences that you did. When you first see these flash disks, it makes you think that this is going to be a sinking lure. Um, but it, it's not. It floats. It is super buoyant. It casts like a bullet. I fish a lot of ultralight. What I found is I could cast this and put it exactly where I, I wanted much more than other small jerk baits. I mean, when you deal with a large jerk bait, it has enough weight just in that body, but even with these small ones, and what's interesting is in many cases, the weight is the same, a quarter ounce, regardless of the length. So they've kept it kind of at that optimal uh, the weight. It has the great action that you talked about, but the thing that really impressed me the most was it's near neutral buoyancy, meaning when you stop reeling that in or jerking it, the lure just hangs there in the water column. So if you have a bass that, or other uh, species that's coming up and, and watching that lure, with a lot of jerk baits I fished with, you stop reeling it and it just pops right up to the, the surface immediately. This hangs right in front of the fish for a long time. As a matter of fact, it hangs for so long, I kept thinking I was snagged. I'd be like, well, well, the lure didn't come up. Where is it? Is it snagged on something? And it just sits there. And I think that's probably the best feature of this. It casts like a bullet and it hangs there in that water column. So if you're jerking it, not reeling it consistently, you can stay at the same depth. You can jerk it and, and let it sit there for a few seconds and then jerk it again. And you're not, it's not floating all the way back to the, the top. And I give them high marks for those designs, as well as you saying the thing's bulletproof. I mean, it is a very hard surface lure and I bounced it off rocks on purpose. Didn't make a, a you know, a dent in the, the, the thing and was very easy to get hookups on it. Very high quality hooks as well. Yeah, it, it's, it's an exciting bait. It's a well-built bait. And, and the, the fact that it does have that near neutral and yet it does have a floating aspect to it uh, is going to be sheer dynamite 
for people fishing for those big black crappies where you've got them down in the weed bed and they're they're looking up and you know that old technique where you stick your rod clear down in the water and try to run your rapala over the top of the right depth to get them up now with this you can truly you know a crappie's a fish that loves to suspend so whether in a weed bed or you're out here on hillsdale by me fishing for white crappie and they're suspended in the treetops right at 10 feet down you can keep this lure right in that 10 foot zone and of course bass will do this white bass will do it i mean this lure this august when the whites are hitting the top water stuff and all that i can't wait it's going to be just a whole lot of fun but yeah you can keep it right there in the zone a lot easier to keep it in the strike zone let's get this recording done so i can get back out there <laughs> <laughs> and you know it comes in a lot of different colors one of the other things i like is there's a huge size variation so if you're fishing ultralight you can use this if you're fishing for larger bass or stripers you could use it for that as well so they they've really um created a lot of different variations with, with it it's definitely something I will keep in my uh, tackle box from now on um, for the smallmouth and largemouth and other species I fish for. This is perfect. I think it'd be great for walleye, for sawgye, whatever you're uh, fishing for. Um, I give them high marks for the research and uh, I give them even higher marks for sending us some free lures to review. <laughs> hey, that's right. Because we sent out a bunch of press releases and Berkeley got right on it. So uh, first in line, thank you so much, Berkeley. Warning, warning, lure news alert, lure news alert. Okay, news flash. Here we go. We got 44 year old country singer and American Idol judge Luke Bryan, who had to seek medical attention following a fishing injury in which his lure punctured his thumb in two places. In a video he posted online, Bryan said, This is going to leave a mark. And <laughs> pretty sure that's in my bone. <laughs> ouch man i mean it but we'll be back on the water in about 25 minutes he added and he was back on his boat and fishing within a few hours anyway we posted a link to the video in the show notes with all the national reporting on this story not one news outlet bothered to find out what type of lure it was that luke bryan was using i mean to me this is an outrage this is the the the, the status the quality of our national reporting today and why people are so upset about fake news you know you you won't find that kind of shoddy journalism on the lure love podcast where we always get to the bottom of what lure was involved Unfortunately, there were no great photos of the lure because Brian's thumb kept blocking the, the, the lure in the video. So we asked Lucy, the lure matic computer, to piece together partial photos and make a determination about the lure. So, Lucy, what did you find? Well, guys, there were no clear brand markings on the lure. I could tell it was a crankbait with a square bill. The body was silver with some blue on the back. Plus, there was a small area of yellow color around the base of the front treble hook. Running the image through my extensive lure database, I can say with 98% certainty that the lure was a Strike King KVD Square Bill Silent Crankbait in Chrome Sexy Shad. Lucy, you are amazing. So, John, what do you know about the Strike King KVD Square Bill Silent Crankbait? Well, according to Strike King's website, it's designed to the exact specifications of the four time Bassmaster Classic champ, Kevin Van Damme. They call it a silent assassin. Silent but deadly, huh? You can smell that all the way through the microphone. <laughs> oh no, wait! <laughs> We're talking about the lure here. Sorry, and mm -hmm. and it, by the way, it was the dog, not me. Um, <laughs> folks, this square bill is designed to bounce off and deflect off cover, and wander with an erratic searching action while still running true. The KVD square bill silent crankbait does not have any internal rattles, which makes it good for sk um, skittish, you know, pressured fish. John, so here's my question about this unfortunate fishing accident. Do you think the hook could be saved? And if so, would you need to resharpen it before fishing again, considering that penetrated bone? Yeah, yeah I love that. You're a tackle tinker. You know, it's like, I don't know. I hope so. Because, you know, it's like, say, you know, we're always saving hooks off old lures. We're always, yeah, you got to save that hook. Um, it definitely going to need to be resharpened, though, I think. He, I tell you what, he had a smile on his face, but this is a nasty looking injury. It is a big treble and it definitely looks in the, the video like it penetrated bone. Oh man. One time I had some lures set out on the handrail of a dock, you know, the dock fin uh, railing all the way around. I had them set out on top of it and I saw a bass rise at a dock, a cottage or two over. And so I just grabbed one of those lures and started to run 
and it snagged into the wood of the dock, which caused it to go into the pad of my thumb. Ouch. And basically yanked me, you know, back off my feet. So by the own weight of my body, I got hooked on that. Yeah, I was just a teenager at the time, only about 15. And I had to uh, stand there and try to figure out all this stuff I'd read about what to do when you get hooked. And you're sitting there going, you know, trying to remember. And the, they used to teach us to put line through it, you know, and then press down and all this crazy stuff. But uh, just between me and my pocket knife and my pliers, I, I got it out. But that was uh, wow. Well. Yeah, and then I didn't tell any grown-ups, which was dumb. I'm glad I didn't get tetanus from that, but uh, I got away with it. But boy, so I know how kind of you know I, I, I'm in, I'm in the club, Luke. I'm in the club. I know how it feels, man. You so you know what a bass feels like when you're ripping lips. It, that's what happened to you, but with your thumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I always feel so guilty if I don't don't get them where I'm supposed to. Now I haven't had been stuck myself, but I remember I was fishing with my kids at a pond one day and this girl who was about 10 came up who had never fished before and grabbed some kids fishing pole at you know one of these zebco units that have like the, the 10 or 12 pound test line on it and she heaved back to cast and caught another kid right in the cheek so hard that when she cast she snapped the 10 pound tests and what, 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 what was amazing about it was after you got done hearing the screams is there was no blood at all. It was like she had pierced her cheek that it pinched right, th right through with the hook. Now this was a single hook. I think it was a small jig that, that she had on there, but I can still hear that snap. I, and it's it, the, the crazy thing is I told my kids, I said, stay away from her when she's cast and she looks a little bit erratic. And then that happened. So <laughs> I feel so bad for the kid that got stuck and, and, uh, and for everybody, but oh my God. I, yeah, I, I did too, but we, we got the, the, uh, the kid to the emergency room and they were able to get it out, you know, no, no harm done, but. Yeah. Well, it's too bad. She wasn't a nineties goth girl. She could have just left it in. There. <laughs> John as a follow-up question. Do you think strike King will start to put a warning label on their crankbaits that says keep away from thumbs and famous country singers? Uh, yeah, but after our little story session, I guess we're going to have to add crazy kids and <laughs> old hippies that never grew up. And it's going to be a warning label that like when you open the lure, it just kind of scrolls out, you know, and accordion folds all the way down to your feet. So I don't know. I don't know if we, we need to put Strike King uh, through that and all the rest, or if we could just wise up, you know what I'm saying? You know what, Tim, I think got hooked on a sexy shad would make a good name for a country song. What do you think? Absolutely. You know, Luke, the funny thing is Luke Bryan is actually a huge fishing fanatic. And um, I don't know if you know, but he had a album that came out in 2020 that has a song titled Bill Dance about the, the bass fishing legend. And here's the lyrics to the first verse. And I just love this. I mean, he re this guy loves to fish. And this is the first verse of the song. It goes, saved all my birthday money up, put it down on a rod and reel. I got my green and tan plane out loaded up permission to fish behind that old sawmill. Mama said, watch for snakes. Daddy said, shut the gate. Brother said they're biting on the zoom black and red flake. Zoom plastic worms. Gotta love it. I mean it. That's awesome. That's awesome. There's so much in that little verse right there. Um, anyway, I just love it. I am not very familiar with Luke's work, but I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that right away. You got to love any song that actually is mentioning the brand names of lures and fishing. That's that's right up my alley. Oh, and the fact that, he, you know, this guy isn't making this up. I mean, a green and tan Plano, you know, <laughs> who doesn't have or didn't have one. And daddy said, shut the gate, uh, got permission to go where he was fishing. Um, you know, it's, you know, be, be a good sport and uh, get some inside info from your older brother. Get going, you know. <laughs> But yeah, it, that's, that's just awesome. Just awesome. I'll tell you what, Luke, Brian, if you are listening, please contact us to confirm that Lucy was correct about the KVD square bill, silent crankbait. And buddy, if you ever want to come on to the podcast and talk about lures, you're always welcome. Smart Lure Corporation announced that they've developed the world's first intelligent lure, the Smart Lure Model Zero, which collects data on its actions and environmental factors while it's in the water and then transfers the data to your smartphone for processing. This enables anglers to obtain accurate information on the underwater environment that could not be seen ever before, and to use that information as clues to improve their catch. The Smart Lure Model Zero is equipped with a proprietary sensor module that produces 
high definition data on water temperature, brightness and actions, and the depth of the lure while it's in the water. Data is transferred to the Smart Lure app whenever requested by the angler. In addition to the location and date and time information, the app also integrates the weather conditions, moon cycle, tides, and other information that could affect the behavior of fish and ultimately fishing results. The company analyzes data by fish species, underwater environment, lure types, colors, and actions so that the secrets of fishing can be brought to light. That's up from its news release. So John, is it just me or is this company trying to steal all my best fishing spots? <laughs> you know, when it comes to technology, you know, I was there when they came out with the, the fish finder, but people were like, those darn things need to be outlawed. You know, fish finder is not fair. One thing I like about this though, is that it does give the geeked out scientific angler a lot of data to play with. That's no doubt about that. It's clearly is going to provide a huge amount of data. See, yep. my, my feeling is if I'm going to get skunked, I want to get skunked the old fashioned way. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I, I'll tell you, as, as you were reading this, I'm sitting there going, you know, a lot of this stuff I'm doing, just collecting through my senses. Okay. But it's taken me 43 years to get here. Okay. And on, on the other hand, you know, when I look at my 17 year old self, my 14 year old self, and I think of a person out there, a young person out there with their cell phone and, and they're living in a tech world. And to them, this is just another instrument, scientific instrument to gather data so they can make, maybe make their decisions based on science. But I would hope they'd have a, a, a fisher that had done it the old fashioned way. They can tell them, you know, you got to learn to get where the fish are. You got to get the touch. So, you know, when you got a strike, you may know where they're at. You may know what they want, but if you can't tell they've hit your lure, then you know, you're out of luck. So there's a lot of things that an app can do for you, but there's a lot of things that never will. You're absolutely right. What you don't want the app to tell you is, John, you have not caught any fish in the last 17 hours. <laughs> I don't need, I don't need an app for that. Yeah, no, <laughs> but I'll tell you, John, if I wanted a high tech lure, there are three things that I would want it to do. The first is, I want it to be able to deploy a small crowbar and unsnag itself so I would never lose a lure again. That's awesome. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And then the second thing is when two fish approach the lure, and this is probably you've had this before, I want the lure to automatically swim into the mouth of the larger fish because inevitably that smaller fish beats out the larger one by two inches. Every time, every time, every time, every time. And I, oh man, I've got some stories. <laughs> and then the third thing is if the bass are finicky, I'd like to lure to be able to taunt them by saying things like your mother was a carp and your father was a catfish to really entice them to chomp down on it. Big old, you know, male bass being like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to bite you. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. W what do you want in a high tech lure? Okay, so here's what I want in my high tech lure. Okay, first of all, I want to have it to have a metal detector in it so I can hunt treasure while I fish. So if the fish aren't biting and and uh, I can get out my magnet and pull up uh, treasure or, or get out my swim fins and, and find some treasure, whatever, right? But I want it to hunt for treasure. So you could catch like a, a 10 pound salmon and a Buick in the same cast? <laughs> I, uh, that, would, that would be the whole idea it's like my buick and whatever comes spilling out when we open the doors is mine as well also uh, you know we talk about what what does a fish know but i want the lure to transmit all the grunts and noises i don't realize i am making while cranking in a good fish to the fish so the fish knows he's got a chance that he's having an effect on the monster that's up there pulling him towards shore because Dude, the first time I ever made a YouTube video of myself fishing, I all the puffing and huffing, <laughs> grunting, and all these noises. My, you know, Kathy was just like, "What in the world? How old are you supposed to be?" And uh, so anyway, I want to give the fish a chance. I love it. I totally want it to grow legs and scramble like a crab over deadfalls and and uh, lily pads, and then jump off, especially lily pads, maybe scramble up on it, run around a couple of times to set up sort of a thing, maybe hop from one or two pads to the other, then dive in, you know, boom. Uh, so that, that, that's what my, my automatic uh, high-tech lure can do. I am so surprised that we have not been contacted by one of these high-tech companies as research consultants with ideas like this 
we would be on the cutting edge. All we need is a Kickstarter campaign and raise a couple, <laughs> couple million dollars and we will get right on this. Just a couple mil and we're there. All right. <laughs> easy, as, easy as breathing. All right. Well, that's all for today. We'd like to thank Grace Beat for singing our intro outro song. We like to thank Glasswater Angling for making Lure Love possible. And we really want to thank Berkeley for sending us those hit sticks, baby. We are so excited to use your new lure. We got it off the hot lure list for 2021. And by golly, that's where it sure belongs, right up there at the top. So thank you, Berkeley. Until next time, this is Tim, Lucy, and the Crappie Hippie asking why buy one lure when you can buy 103. Lure love, you've been on my mind. Never enough lures to tie to the end of my life.